I try to sever myself a little bit from that problem because I know this kid just made a major mistake. You don't go to another family. That was a mistake. So at this point, Michael sends two guys to come see me, two guys that I know very, very well. Made men or no? Uh, one's a made guy, one is a associate. associate. Yeah. Big guy, though. <laughs> so I meet them at a restaurant right next to my office. They call me, and when they call me, I said, who is this? And they uh, said, it's Heckle and Jekyll or whatever stupid name they use. So they said, we're next door at the restaurant, come see us. So I go there, and there's a vestibule there. And in the vestibule, we don't actually go in the restaurant, and one of them says, listen, you guys are doing an IPO. That IPO's got to come here. It's got to be to us. I said, well, the IPO's not going to you. It's going to Johnny. He says, you can't do that. I says, listen to me. Johnny's writing me letters. He's calling my house. He's telling me I got to be strong. He's only as strong as his friends are on the street. I can't give you this. He said, well, this is going to be a problem. So I said, well, I don't know what you want to do. You want to roll around right here in the vestibule? You're not getting it. I don't know what you want to do, but you're not getting it. That night, I go to a club in uh, Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Michael's at the bar. And I went there specifically to see maybe he'd be around. I was going to approach him, but I knew he'd approach me. So he sends one of the guys that I saw in the vestibule over to see me. And he says, Mike wants to talk to you. So I see Michael at the bar. This is 1996. And he says, you're crazy, man. You go see my two thugs like that, <laughs> my goons, and you tell them what you told You don't need to see anybody else. You're with me. You just see me. Like, you think this guy Johnny can help you? Number this is the Leonardo. This yeah. is, okay. Number one, he's old. Number two, he's not well-liked. Number three, he's a drunk. Number four, when he comes home, he's moving to Florida. You know, he can't do anything. Who's he talking about moving to Florida? Johnny Never G? Around. Okay, got Johnny it. Johnny G. Yeah. So now I got a skipper telling me I'm directly with him. So I got to make a decision. How much more loyalty can I continue to support Johnny G with now yeah. that Michael himself is telling me this? So I'm going to guys that I respect their opinion, wise guys, what do I do? Everybody's saying, you don't understand Michael. He's going to be a boss one day. You're in great shape. This guy's going to be a boss. You're doing the right thing. But now, technically, I'm betraying Gamarano, mm -hmm. which I'm very uncomfortable about. Am I willing to die over it? I don't, maybe. I mean, I love the life. I wanted to be part of this life. This was made for me. And I didn't want to answer to anybody, so I had very lofty goals. I didn't want to be a skipper. I want to be boss. <laughs> you. I mean, again. You can't, to, though. You're half Sicilian. You're not 100%, right? I don't have can't. to be 100%. You have to be 100% Italian. I thought you used to be 100% Sicilian no, back in the days. No, 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 no. Okay, so you have to be 100% Italian. doesn't matter if you're Sicilian. You don't even have to be 100% Italian. Your father has to be Italian. It, it, they change it, though. Yeah. It used to be. Your mother could pretty much be anything, and your father has to be Italian. But, but I'm 100% Italian. Okay, so you're, okay, so I thought it was 100% Sicilian. My point is I don't take orders very well. But so you, if I'm going to be in this, I want to run it. Were you really ambitious enough to one day want to be a boss or no? If it was there for the taking, yeah. yes, I would have. Okay. Because I, I think I understand the biggest mistake the mob ever made. The biggest mistake ever. Besides the fact that there's no loyalty and there's just uh, they made such a mess of it, the problem is if they ever, ever really implemented, and this is supposed to be organized crime. I mean, look how organized it was with Maya Lansky and Lucky Luciano. So, you know, everybody says when Gotti came, it's because Paul was a businessman. Paul was a businessman. He didn't know the street. First of all, of course, Paul knew the street. He was indicted and did time for hijacking. So don't say he wasn't a street guy. Maybe, you know, he forgot those roots and he became a businessman. But that's exactly what was needed. Without a doubt, a businessman. Not Nobody was flipping at the time. How do you explain that? So what happened is now with the new regime, nobody's providing for these families. So if Patrick is going to go away for Sal, then Sal better do the right thing for Patrick's family. And with nobody doing that and nobody implementing that and instilling those values and you're left for the Philistines, why would you stay loyal? Why? Why would you? So do you understand? So Omerta was impossible. In my world, this, and I'm going to use the word conformity a lot. If, are you familiar with Joe Valachi? Of course. Okay. So Joe Valachi, let's say, was the first rat. Sure. But what Joe Valachi did is he gave Mario Puzo and Francis Ford Coppola the platform to understand a world they never would have understood. And because of all that information out there from Valachi, mm -hmm. now Puzo's able to write a book. So once Francis Ford Coppola comes into this mix, and he's such a family-oriented guy, he brings the family element into organized crime and the mafia. And what happens is 
everybody wants to be part of this. So the the, the wise guys may have not acted yeah. the way uh, the way Marlon Brando acted. Yeah. But now they wanted to act that way. So you want to talk about art imitating life or yeah. life imitating art? There's the reason. So now you have a whole new spectrum of what this is supposed to be about. But everybody forgets this, Patrick, so let me r remind you of something. There was no federal presence. There was no Fed investigation. As early as 1960, you have J. Edgar Hoover stating publicly there's no there's such thing exist, as the mob. Yeah. So if you're relegated to local cops, you keep them on the payroll, you stay off the radar. Yeah. It was pretty easy. Then once Rudy starts bringing in, you know, uh, the, the RICO Act, and now you have that. He changed the game, though. Without a doubt. Yeah. But before him, Bobby Kennedy really did, too, because now all of a sudden there was an attack on the mob. Well, the and the only reason in my world why Bobby Kennedy ever went after the mob was to keep it quiet about how his brother became president. There's so a lot the of reason. different speculations there. There's a lot of different speculations there because of all situation with they, they were worried about Illinois with Dewey. They needed those 7,000 votes from dead people. To they help needed them. West Virginia. They really didn't need Illinois, by the way. That was going to happen without it. And then they hated the fact that there was that uh, you owe us a favor type of mentality. And Bobby had the bigger ego than John, apparently. Uh, but at the same time, there's a little bit of link with uh, Marilyn Monroe and women and Sonny. There's a lot of different stories to it. But, but the point is, once the attack yeah. on the mafia started, now all Came of a sudden, over. and it's publicity now, and it's publicity nobody needed. And Joe Bonanno's book also didn't help, by the way, that, when he wrote that book. That, yeah. Joe Colombo with his Italian civil rights campaign, and then, of course, John in 1985. So what shot did this have? So if it's going to be an imminent prison sentence yeah. for everybody, provide for the families. Do you think guys are flipping because they're afraid of jail? These guys, these are men. Interesting. Nobody's so afraid of jail. They were, they're afraid if, of not providing for their families. So if you, uh, and that was one of uh, Mikey Scar's concerns as well when he talked about in the interview with Trevor McDonald. He says, I called the guys. I'm like, wait a minute. I need food for my, for my wife. And the boss said, Tr uh, get her on uh, welfare because she needs to get on. I said, what do you mean get her on welfare? I can't get her on welfare. And then that's when he flipped. They show so, that in Goodfellas too. Yeah, so the concern is if you can't support your family, the person's going to flip. Well, that's just one, you know, part of it. Did you follow Tomaso Boschetta's story as well or no? Yeah. Similar story there as well. Slightly different there because of, uh, you know. The point is a yeah. wise guy takes an oath to put this, okay, Cosa Nostra, yeah. ahead of God and their own family. I mean, only an imbecile would actually do that. You may make that profession at your induction ceremony, but do you think anybody really believes that? Do you want to put this thing, Cosa Nostra, ahead of your child, ahead of your God? I mean, where's that going to get you? So it's a fake statement to begin with. But my point is, if they ever implemented something to provide for the families, and they have, they would have to be a formula. You know, based on your contributions, Earnings. based on where you it's, are. It's still, somebody still would have flipped though. Without a doubt. Yeah. But my point is, it I, think, been less. I think it would yeah. have been contained. No, it would have been less. Okay, so now you, you get with Mikey Scars. They tell you he's going to be the boss. He's a cop at that time. You're going in. Is this still 99 when you're netting 30, or uh, what year is this with Mikey no, this Scars? this is 96. So now it's 97, and the FBI comes to my house, knocks on the door at 6 o'clock in the morning, and there's two agents there. And they tell me I'm going to be assassinated. They tell me there's a contract on my life, and it's coming from the West Side, which is the Genovese family. So I said, can you tell me why? And they were like, we don't know anything about you. We're just obligated to tell you this. From informants, there's a contract on your life from the West Side. I said, and you can't tell me anything? He said, supposedly it's some stock deal that went bad. So I said, well, I'm not involved in stocks, so I don't even know what you're talking about. They said, look, we're just giving you the heads up. So obviously, I took this as a credible threat. So in my mind, I believe this is Gamarano from prison Got it. plotting to kill me, knowing he can't use the Gambino family to kill me, so he had to go to the west side. That's what I believe now. So now I have a choice. Do I sit inside like a hermit? Do I change my lifestyle? I didn't even move into my new house yet. And I only had, I had two children. They were babies. And I'm still on parole. I got a probation officer to answer to. So now I call her and I tell her, I guess I'm obligated to tell you this, but the FBI just left here telling me I'm going to be killed. She said, well, if you have any problems, you know my number. I'm licensed to carry a firearm. Great. So now I'm left saying, what do I do now? So obviously I go to Michael. I explain to him what's going on. 
And I said, would you think I was crazy if I told you I think it was Gamarano? He says, no, I wouldn't think you're crazy. I think you're very, very smart. You've come a long way in these last few years. And we were left to believe that. So yeah, I guess this is when I started realizing, you know, I don't want to say how tough I am, but you know, at the end of the day, I wasn't going to change anything. I made the, the decision that this is my life, that I am in this. I'll do what I can to protect myself. I have my crew. I'll do whatever I can, but I'm not going to change anything. And again, I hadn't even moved into my home yet. I hadn't even bought the new brokerage firm that I was going to buy. And this was just really at the start. So we got off. We did deal after deal. I did all of these other businesses. Things were going very, very well. And then Pete Gotti gets pinched in 2002 at some point. And then at my restaurant, we're having a birthday party for Michael. I want to say that was June 2002. After Michael left his party, he arrived home, and I think at 5 o'clock in the morning, that morning, he got picked up and pinched. So now he was arrested, too. So now, ironically enough, at the time where Michael is now in jail, Gamarano's now back on the street. So where do you think that leaves me? And this is where everybody betrays me. I get bounced around from guy to guy, nothing but issues, nothing but problems. 9-11 happened. The internet bubble in March of 2000 happened. Things are no longer robust and good. And now Gamarano's playing his games. And now this is when everything goes bad. And then ultimately in May of 2003 is when I agreed to flip. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.